and then tongue all the way up to the back teeth. So uh, when my daughter was three, we started doing a, a co-op preschool for her. And when it was my turn to teach and the kids would come to our house, um, that's when I really first noticed that her speech was a lot behind her peers. Her speech delays are, were called childhood apraxia of speech. And then she has sensory processing disorder. And so she does speech still as well as um, feeding therapy. Her sensory issues have affected how she eats and certain food textures are just not tolerable for her and she's eliminated complete food groups. At one point, right around when our third child was born, she was in four and five therapies a week. So I ended up quitting my job as a nurse to homeschool her and to take her to four therapies a week, lugging around her brothers. <laughs> and it was, it was, took up our life, you know. What do you think about this thing? It was fine. It was fine. So that means that you're willing to try it again because it's like, okay. So how would you feel about trying to Okay, which one are we gonna take apart? Cue our third kid. When he was um, about four, so about a, a little over a year ago, year and a half ago, he started exhibiting some of the same signs that we recognized as sensory needs. And so we had him evaluated, and he also has sensory processing disorder. They have you know, the same diagnosis, but it affects them so differently. So we have my son, who is a sensory seeker, and he's all about making everything chaotic. He's 110% all the time, very loud, very busy. Oh boy, I wonder if you can climb that corner like that. That'd be cool. And then my daughter is a sensory avoider. So all that chaos and noise that he is thriving on shuts her down and she needs to get away from that. So she spends a lot of time alone in her room and he, you know, tornadoes the house. And it's, it's really hard to balance these two kids with very opposite needs in one house. Our insurance doesn't pay for any of the therapies. Like if they had been in an accident, it's covered. If they're born with a need, it's not covered. There's a constant struggle between doing what we knew what was right for her and like having that financial nag at the back of our mind. We had my daughter doing her feeding therapy and her speech therapy just once a month and my son doing his occupational therapy once a month because we were having to pay cash for that and it, it adds up, especially, you know, we're in it eight years at this point. We heard about elevations and um, Quinton's therapist suggested we apply for a grant this last uh, fall, I guess it was. We applied, we got accepted, and we essentially doubled the amount of therapies uh, that we've been uh, able to take them to, and that has you know, essentially doubled our, our the, the effectiveness of, of the treatments, and, and we've been seeing a huge benefit from, from both of our kiddos. true definition of a community is coming together and um, and helping people out. And fulfilling a need where That's there's right. a gap. You know, these, these insurances are leaving a gap for kids that have a need. It's pretty incredible that there's organizations out there with the sole purpose of of getting people together to help fulfill the, the need and fill these fill these gaps. Mm -hmm.